Okay, getting down to the final four uh, hokey uh, yeast experiment beers. Uh, next up is Mr. Sun Drunk. He did the WLP 005 British Ale yeast. Um, this yeast is a little more attenuative than WLP 002. Like most English strains, this yeast produces malty beers, excellent for all English styles. Uh, English style ales, including bitter, pale ale, porter, and brown ale. Let's give it a try. Thanks from uh, Mr. Sun Drunk for uh, participating in the experiment. We're looking forward to trying your beer. Got a nice sis on it. Oop. A little bit of a gusher. Sorry about that. I got quite a bit of uh, sediment. Quite a bit of sediment in there. First gusher, I think, so far. Um, could be a sign of, uh, of uh, infection or, or uh, overcarbonation. It's probably not overcarbonation, though. Um, anyway, let's uh, go forth. We've got a uh, orange beer, kind of uh, deep brownish orange, similar to uh, most of the colors. Uh, not much clarity, but I got a lot of uh, a lot of sediment in the in the glass, uh, about a finger of head. Uh, a little bit darker head maybe than some of the others. Uh, let's get the aroma. Uh, you get a malty and cidery aroma in this one. A little bit of a sweetness in the nose. Almost a sugary smell. And some of the, the caramel comes through as well. Cheers. Thanks again, Mr. Some Drunk. Hmm. Yeah, a little uh, overcarbonated compared to the others. Not really detecting much of an infection or anything like that. A little bit sweeter. Um, the bubbles are, are really uh, detracting from the malt flavor, though kind of masking it <clears throat> um, but uh, yeah a little a little thinner than the others um, not much bitterness a little more maltiness coming through um, really dry finish hard to pick out a lot of the flavors due, due to the, uh, the carbonation I'm gonna let this decarbonate a little bit and come back in a few minutes so final thoughts on Mr. Some Drunk's beer um, I think that uh, I left it warm for quite a while about a month and a half and uh, I think the yeast may have just still been active in it. It says it is uh, more attenuative than, than some of the other yeasts, so that could be that. Um, it does have a slight pear ester in it. Um, Mouthfeel is a little bit dry, uh, a little bit low, but uh, otherwise a good beer. Uh, very drinkable. Um, after I get the carbonation out of there, I get more flavors. And uh, so, yeah, very good beer. Thanks again, Mr. Some Drunk. Cheers. All right, next up is main brew guy. He used Y yeast 1945 Northern Brewer Neo Britannia. This is uh, Northern Brewer's um, proprietary strain, um, which is pretty interesting. You can only buy it from Northern Brewer, as far as I understand. It says this traditional English ale yeast works well with a wide range of beer styles, from low gravity beers, bitters, and miles to strong stouts, porters, and old ales. Due to the cell's chain-forming characteristics, it is an excellent top-cropping yeast. Moderate ester profile makes it great for a great match for, for hop-driven beers like bitter and pale ale, but attenuative, attenuative enough to handle high gravity, uh, higher gravity multi styles. Excellent flocculation yields clear beer and allows for cast conditioning. Ferment at the lower end of the temperature range for a cleaner finish, or utilize the upper end. Uh, to enhance low gravity beers with a more assertive ester profile. So the question is, what temperature did you brew this at, Main Brew Guy, or uh, ferment this at? Uh, the range is 66 to 74 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's get this open. <coughs> Thanks, Main Brew Guy, for participating in the uh, Hokie Yeast experiment. 
I've so far enjoyed all the beers that, that you sent me outside of the experiment. So I'm looking forward to trying this one. Got some yeast in the uh, in the neck. <coughs> it's already pouring a very creamy, very creamy uh, appearance. Really big head on this one. Uh, kind of get a, a deep, rich orange color. Um, in my bigger, thicker glass, uh, still cloudy. Uh, about uh, two, three finger head, really pillowy. Uh, looks really nice. Let's get the aroma. Wow, I get uh, get a little hops in this one, like uh, like fresh hops. What did we use with Lamet in this? I can't even remember. Because it almost smells like a really light citrus. A hop aroma. Um, definitely not as potent as an IPA, but that aroma is there. Um, you might not be smelling the malts underneath this uh, this thick head, but we'll get back to that as soon as the head dies down a little bit. In the meantime, let's get the taste. Cheers. Mmm. That's really nice, man, Brew Guy. Did an excellent job brewing this. Um, really, really light carbonation. Lends itself to a maybe a thicker mouthfeel than some of the others. Um, even though they say that this uh, this attenuates, I think. I can't remember what they said about parent attenuation. Eh, parent attenuation seems to be pretty average. But this one is pretty thick. Not as thick as uh, Broken CRJ, <coughs> the yeast that he used. But it's got a really nice mouthfeel. A really low carbonation. Let's get some more flavors. So it starts off um, not a whole lot. In the middle, it's got a really nice, really, really nice malty, dark fruit, raisiny, um, maybe even oak. <coughs> Definitely dark fruits, raisins. Uh, this one's a really nice yeast for sure. Those darker fruits are really, really good in this. Raisin vanilla. <coughs> um, don't get a whole lot of toastiness from the malt. Not yet, anyway. I'm going to let this warm up a little bit, keep sipping on it, and I'll be back. Really quick, uh, also this one's a little bit sweet on, on the front, a little bit of sweetness. In the back there's a lot of lingering bitterness, uh, which makes it, um, if you don't like that lingering bitter, bitterness, it might be a little off-putting. It's not for me. Um, also has those deep, with that lingering bitterness, that uh, the fruity esters are kind of lingering in there as well. So a very nice beer. I think this is going to rank towards the top of my, my favorite yeasts. Uh, it's not going to trump the two or three favorites I have so far, but a uh, very nice beer. Thanks, Main Brew Guy. And cheers. All right, next up we have SMC Brewing Company. Um, been wanting to try his beer for a while, a.k.a. Simcoe Brewing Company. Uh, he used the 1099 White Bread Ale from Y Yeast. A mildly malty and slightly fruity fermentation profile it is less tart and dry than Y Yeast 1098 British Ale, which is the one that Wainer 665 used, uh, which was a really nice yeast. Uh, with good flocculation characteristics, this yeast uh, clears well without filtration. Low fermentation temperatures will produce a clean finish with a very low ester profile. Temperature range is, range is 74 to 75 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. Thanks SMC Brewing Company, I've been waiting to try one of your beers. Uh, so I'm looking forward to this. Let's get it open. By the way, nice job on the tape. I think that's going to separate the real homebrew drinkers from the fake ones. A lot of smoke. Nice hiss on the uh, on the bottle. Opening. A 
Looks like this one's going to be on the slightly darker side. Kind of a rich amber brown. Copper amber color. A little bit of sediment in there, not too much. Really nice uh, finger, half finger head. Um, looks really, really nice. And it's probably uh, fairly clear and more slender glasses because I can see through the uh, the bottom of this one. Uh, but since this glass is so thick, there's not a lot of clarity that's going to be present in, in this glass. Let's get the aroma. It's got a sweet aroma, almost uh, almost a little apple-y. Maybe not quite apple, more like a, maybe like a tart apple or pear. Let's see if we can get some, some malt aroma in there. Yeah, you get a little bit of, actually, um, you get a lot of malt like... Uh, like dark fruit malts, like uh, like you're getting some barley wines almost. Yeah, the malt's coming through really well now. Very nice aroma. It's got that sweet barley wine aroma to it. Very cool. Okay, cheers. Um, it's got a pretty nice smooth mouthfeel, uh, perfect carbonation. thought I tasted a little bit of alcohol in the front. Uh, this is the first beer of the day though, so that might be not the case. Really nice, rich, malty flavor. Um, definitely lower on the esters than, than some of the others. <clears throat> There's a... Um, I wouldn't say that it's super, super dry, uh, but it does have a clean finish. Mmm, it's got a really, really nice malty flavor. Caramel, uh, toffee maybe. Wow, this is not going to take long to drink. So far, I think the 1099 and the 1098 <clears throat> from Y Yeast are, are my two favorites outside of SJ Pours um, WLP023, which was very uh, peary and cidery, but the esters were really nice, at least in the bottle that I had. Mine was not infected. Some other people said that, uh, that his was infected, including him himself. I'm going to step on this, see if I get any any fruit esters. Not much in there, mostly malt, caramel and stuff, so I'll be back in a few minutes. Okay, so I'm back. Uh, it's not going to take much uh, deliberation to, to think about this beer. One thing I didn't mention is that it's not very bitter. A little bit sweet in the middle and then finishes really dry, but uh, definitely not as bitter as some of the Scottish ales and some of the other drier, uh, cleaner yeasts. Uh, so this one kind of uh, hides the hides the bitterness a little bit, um, but just a really really drinkable, delicious beer. So you hit the hit the mark on this beer, SM, SMC Brewing Company. Uh, definitely a good yeast, Y yeast 10.99. Cheers. Okay, final beer for the Hokey uh, Yeast Experiment uh, is Dayton Home Brewing. Uh, bitter bitch. Very awesome label, as everyone has already commented. <laughs> Uh, yeast strain 1318, wide yeast, London Ale 3, originating from a traditional London brewery. This yeast has a wonderful malt and hot profile. It is a true cropping strain with a fruity, very light, and softly balanced palate. The strain will finish slightly sweet. Thanks, Dayton, for uh, participating. Been looking forward to trying one of your beers. Also very impressed that, uh, that you drunk call the Brewing Network. That's pretty awesome. <laughs>
Uh, looks like about the same color as SMC Brewing Company, except maybe a little lighter, much bigger, thicker head on this one. Not very much sediment. Oh no, it's a little bit lighter, and it's actually fairly clear. Um, I'd say it's right up there with Dwarf 68s as the two clearest uh, ESPs that I've had. A couple of mine have been checking up a little bit when, I, when they were poured. Um, but this one, really, really clean, uh, clear. You probably can't see it very well on the camera, but uh, you'll just have to take my word for it. Uh, color is a nice uh, amber. Amber, almost like a nice reddish amber. Um, really, really pretty beer. Uh, nice pillowy head. Let's get the aroma. Hard to smell much past the head on this one. Really clean uh, aroma. There's that, uh, again, that Saison ester, but very, very, very light. Again, sometimes I think that are, that that ester comes from um, from carbonation sometimes I think I don't know if that's a yeast ester or not get a little bit of a maltiness maybe yeah a little bit of a bready bready maltiness it smells pretty good actually cheers Really tasty beer. A um, little bit sweet up front, and then uh, finishes with some really nice caramel vanilla flavors, probably from the wheat uh, or the um, yeah, probably the wheat. Biscuity from from the the Maris Otter. <clears throat> Maybe a slight dark fruit ester in there. Very very slight. It does have a sweeter finish. Uh, you get a little bit of bitterness in the end, but it goes away. And the sweetness kind of just dies off. It doesn't linger a whole lot. <clears throat> I guess the carbonation kind of kind of cleans it up a little bit. This is one of those kind of chewy ones, you know, smacking your lips kind of beer. A lot of residual sugars in it. A little bit sweeter. Maybe some light fruit esters. Um, <clears throat> maybe a slight banana, slight perish type of type of ester in there. Very very faint though. Uh, the description on the website says softly balanced palate. Yeah, really, really soft on the palate. Uh, very, very nice beer. I think this was an extract, right, Dayton? Can't remember. <clears throat> I know Dorf's was, but um, for some reason I thought you and Dorf had the only extracts. And, which is interesting because they're both the clearest beers. <laughs> Probably a coincidence. Yeah, very, very nice beer. Really good. Um, now, as far as yeast goes, I, I like a little more ester in the yeast, I think. not you know, Maybe a little bit too sweet for my, for my palate. Probably wouldn't pick this yeast as my favorite, as one of my favorites. Um, but it's really close. Uh, the beer was just really, really well done, so it's, it, it's a delicious beer. So uh, that's all I've got, I think, for this one. Cheers, Dayton Brewing. And uh, after this, I'm going to have my top four or five picks. Uh, thanks, Hokey Homebrew and uh, SJ Poor for putting this on. Well, Hokey for putting it on, SJ for being the mail hub. Look forward to participating in the next experiment. Cheers, guys.